Today, we're gonna make this magic magnetic light. Super cool, we use scraps from around the shop and uh, it came out really, really cool. I love this thing, it is really neat. It's got a remote, changes colors. You could set it to single colors, it's really cool. So let's get into the build. All right, so for this project, my goal is to use just things we have here in the shop. Obviously, just like you, I don't wanna to go to the store. They're probably closed anyways. So here's what I'm coming up with. I've got some acrylic and you could use epoxy, I guess, to hold the lights in there. I think people get all mad because of the heat, but they're LEDs and who cares, not a big deal. But I'm gonna use acrylic uh, to go around to diffuse the light. I think it would look pretty terrible to have kind of just the diode showing. So we're gonna cut some acrylic and put lay that in there. Uh, I got these micro snap switches that I've just had sitting in my shop for a long time. And these are really cool. So what we're gonna use this for is these will control the lights and the magnets trying to attach to each other will pull this piece up and it'll turn those lights on. Uh, and then I've got this brass rod that I think I could drill a hole through. It could connect the two pieces and I could run wires through to the base. Obviously the walnut's gonna be the square. You saw that in the intro. And then the spalted maple will be the base. Oh, and of course you're gonna need some magnets and then some fishing line, but I don't have that here. I'm gonna have to grab that out of my fishing bag out of my garage. Let's get our walnut cut up. Just gonna be a basic square. My acrylic's only 12 inches long, so the interior can't be longer than 12 inches. Uh, we're gonna do some mitered corners and then we're gonna router a groove that is the thickness of the lights and then a little bit of a wider one that is the depth of the acrylic and then we can cut it to whatever width we want. Uh, we don't wanna take up too much real estate because we're gonna have to run a string through there for the magnets, but let's get our square put together and get the grooves routed out. Okay, we got our grooves routed and a couple things. One of the fun things about just kind of doing something like this with scrap stuff in your shop, you sort of design as you go, which I love to do. And you come up with some fun ideas. And uh, one of the things I did was I put the groove, as you can see, on the second third. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, I think it will give some depth. The way that the magic magnets are gonna be in here, uh, it could create some more hidden aspects of that with the fishing line. I think maybe because they're not kind of right on top of each other, I think that might be cool. Just the way I thought about it when I was making it. Another thing I did was I chose a very straight grained piece of walnut and I cut it all out of one board and tried to maintain as much as possible. Uh, as you can see, I got a really good grain wrap here. So all the grain looks very continuous. There's not like an odd man out kind of piece. So we are going to glue this up and cut some acrylic. Now here's something to know about the acrylic. This is clear acrylic, but we don't care. We're not even looking for, not to scratch or any of that, because what I'm gonna do is create my own frosted glass by sanding it. We're just gonna sand it with like some very high grit sandpaper. We're gonna sand it really, really well, and that's gonna give us that frosted glass look. That's at least my thought. Uh, so we're gonna cut our acrylic to the same width as our gap here. We're gonna glue this up, and then once that's dry, we'll come back and uh, start wiring the electronics fi and figuring out our base. But project's pretty easy. Not a lot of steps here. So let's uh, get this glued up and cut some acrylic. All right, so the only woodworking left to do is we need to make the things that hold the magnets and we need to router out the bottom. Now you saw me on the bandsaw cut this out because I was looking at it and I thought that a straight line with a big 90 here was gonna just look terrible. So what I did was I followed the spalting of one of the lines as close as I could. I'll, I'll sand it down pretty good. 
Uh, and then I may shave off this corner just to really retain that live edge look all the way around. Um, but we're gonna haul out the cavity. We are going to wire it up. Now, when we get the switch going, I'm not certain. I have some uh, Floraflex 8.5 pound 3X tippet here. I'm a big fly fisherman. And let me tell you, if you're a fly fisherman, get the Floraflex. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Stuff never breaks, it's awesome. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna run that up my brass rod or if I'm going to do it separately. I may scrap the brass rod and do it, but we'll, we'll see. That's the joy of designing and building at the same time. But if I can't go up the rod because I need to kind of make a turn somewhere so the line comes out further in the center of this, um, then I'll just go right behind the rod. It's fishing tippet, so it's gonna be really, really hard to see. And the orientation, you look at the light, you wouldn't see it because it was behind. We'll see, I'm not positive yet. Uh, let's get a hole opened up in here. I'm gonna start slow on that because I want my switch to be really close to my rod and we're gonna cut the, the recess first because we don't want our half inch hole that holds the rod to go all the way into the recess. We wanna make sure that that doesn't go all the way through, otherwise this would just fall through. So do the recess first. We're gonna draw a teeny little pilot hole first so that we can line everything up and then uh, we'll drill the half inch hole into both so that this can sit right on there. Let's get to it. I'll check back in with you when we're, we've figured out how to wire the electronics. I'll show you how the magnets work. All right, so we've got all our parts and we're ready to put this together. The way this is gonna work is um, I am going to run this fishing line up here. We will tie a knot just like we did in the cubes. I'm gonna use the plug that I cut, the walnut plug, to seal that off. That is gonna be a static piece. Then this one is gonna come up from underneath. I'll see if I can do this one-handed. Uh, this one's gonna come up from underneath and we are going to adjust the length so that it's gonna pull up on this micro switch. And the way that these micro switches work is they have two positions on them when you look at them. It's kind of hard to read, but there's the main in, which is marked with a C. You can tell me what that is. I'm drawing a blank right at this second. And then there's NO for normally open and NC for normally closed. Normally open means that when the switch is depressed, it sends current. Normally closed means when the switch is depressed, it turns it off. So as you can see, this is on normally open, so when I click it, it's gonna turn the light on. This switch is gonna get mounted underneath the base, upside down, I punched a little hole in the metal toggle switch, and that's gonna be attached to the fishing line of the other magnet. And we're gonna do it at such a distance that they don't touch each other, but that they float there. And we've tested this. It's really hard to do when one's not attached to something else, but we are gonna adjust that. We're gonna put our lights in. The lights are gonna run through our brass tube, which actually came from the clamp from the Breaking Bad coffee maker I made. If you haven't seen that, it's a really cool video. I'll link it right here. Lights are gonna run through there. We've made room for our little remote control transformer, whatever you call it, relay uh, receiver. And we're gonna start putting this together. Now, when you're doing this, you may have to adjust the bendiness of your switch and play with that, but you should be able to get this right. You saw I cut a little thing for the cord, uh, and then we're gonna throw some finish on this and we're gonna give it a little test.
All right, you guys ready? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cool. And it looks so good. A couple things about how we finish it up. One, wire the switch and everything first and get this at the length that you want it because it's such a pain in the butt. And then it's really easy to adjust this. I found with fishing line, it was way easier than tying a knot just to like throw some super glue in there, throw my plug and be done with it. And then I just sand it off the excess line. It was really easy. Um, this project only took us about four hours on two separate days. So a total of about four hours, five hours maybe. Pretty simple as far as things go. I did kind of a very fancy one, but you could do these in lots of different shapes and ways. Um, the key is those micro snap switches. I will link those down below if you wanna pick some up. And if you wanna support the channel, uh, head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up a t-shirt, a stop block, or a dovetail jig. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day.